Right now, more than 25% of Canadians suffering from dementia in long-term care facilities are given antipsychotic medications. We've talked about this before on the show. It's often used as a way to address hard-to-manage or perhaps aggressive behaviour. Our next guest wants to see that number reduced. Mark Chignell is a professor with the University of Toronto. He's researching how technology can improve the behaviour and quality of life for people with dementia. He's presenting his research tonight at the University of Regina. Right now, he's in our studio. Good morning. Uh, Hi, Sheila. So I was watching a film earlier with this technology that you're developing. Can you describe it for people? Uh, Sure. Um, It's it's like a piece of uh, furniture almost on the wall. It's uh, made of wood. It's crafted wood. Um, There's a large uh, touch screen um, or it uh, could be a screen depending on configuration. Uh, and um, it looks like an old time radio. So it's designed to be uh, very comfortable for the target population. Um, and it has some tuning knobs on it a radio knob and a TV knob. And uh, the content depends on the person. So the person's wearing some kind of uh, badge or bracelet. Uh, it recognizes who they are. And then it changes the, the content to, to match their interests. Can you give me an example of um, a real or hypothet- hypothetical person and, and how they would engage with it? Uh, yes. Uh, I, I've watched uh, a number of people using it. Uh, they, they would come in, first of all, and there's a, there's a, a cat with, uh, with fur on it on one side and they might just touch the cat and then uh, a video starts playing with a bunch of cats on it and uh, this sort of um, gets them interested Um, and then they may um, turn a wheel there's a large like a steering wheel and they, they may start playing with that. This is a sort of Montessori idea of uh, sensory motor uh, activity. Well, I was going to say, some of it reminded me of sort of primary school yes. um, activities that you might see. Yes. So um, people uh, probably, uh, some we, we used to talk about second childhood. And uh, as people start losing uh, functions and uh, cognitive status, uh, they tend to return to um, a, an earlier way of interacting with things. And uh, the Montessori approach that's used for children actually works quite well for people with dementia. Yeah, and there are some matching activities. You know, here's a here's a bird, and then here are four other yes. pictures match match it to the bird in the other pictures. Yes. So, in addition to uh, you know watching old hockey games or newscasts that they're interested in, um, there are a number of games and activities that are delivered on the uh, large touch screen, including uh, concentration type tasks where you uh, you match pairs of objects. Um, but we're also looking at, at other other games as well that that can be played and then a match to the person. Mm. So is this beyond just providing engagement? Well, the, the Montessori approach that we've been looking at uh, is really aimed at providing engagement and reducing these responsive behaviors like hitting and violence that people have. Uh, we have another technology which is based on reinforcement learning, and there we're trying to uh, hold function or improve function. Well, uh, what's that? How does uh, that work? So, so this is where we have a coin dispenser as a reward. We, we can look at other rewards such as uh, music and applause, and the idea is that we give people activities, uh, and if they perform them, then we give them rewards. So uh, ultimately, I hope it would be things like even toilet training, you know, for people who have incontinence. But initially, it might be just uh, rewarding them for physical exercise. So we have a slot machine game. They, they pull a lever, and it's calibrated the, 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 the amount of force required to their strength. And then they, they get coins or other rewards um, uh, as, they, as they play the game. And they're also getting exercise. Mm. And is this all about, um, we, we've, co- we've covered stories in the past about the concern, uh, t- the extent to which antipsychotics are, are being used. Is this all about reducing antipsychotics or is it more than that? Uh, I think it's more than that. A- absolutely. Antipsychotics are a big problem. Everybody knows it. And uh, they're used for a reason. And that is that there are these uh, activities and, and behaviors which are undesirable. Uh, some people say up to about 87% of people with dementia, you know, advanced dementia, show these activities at one point or another, these responsive behaviors. So um, antipsychotics should be reduced through activity and other means as, as, as much as possible. But in addition, we want to make people more active. We want to give people a better quality of life. And uh, this requires giving them purpose and giving them activities they can perform because there simply aren't enough people to give them one-to-one care uh, during the course of a day. Where do you think we're at as a society in terms of how we treat people with dementia and our attitudes towards them? 
I think it's a really interesting question. Um, I would say that in some ways we're, we're not being very realistic about how we look at people as they, they get dementia and as their capabilities change, you know, and we want to treat them with respect and dignity on the one hand, but on the other, uh, we really don't engage with them in a way that's helpful to them. So uh, they end up um, with sort of uh, a situation where they have to sit around and wait for the next meal, and they have very few activities, and the activities that they're given are not, are not targeted at who they are and the, the stage that they're at. And how important is that, that, that personal tailoring of, of those activities? Uh, I would say that it's essential, that everybody's different, and individual differences increase with age, so that by the time you get someone who's 80 or 90, they can have hugely different uh, ranges of function. And even within uh, a person who has dementia, uh, somebody can be interested in music, another person can be a former engineer and want to do uh, physical activities, and it's, it's different for everyone. Mm. Why is this important to you personally? Well, uh, you know, I'm a researcher, and I, I like to do practical things. And uh, this came to me, this project, from uh, a guy, Mark Kanick, who runs the company that makes these uh, ambient activities. And I got really excited about it. Um, I also, my, I was told uh, about a year ago, my father died 15 years ago, but I was told actually he had died with dementia. I had no idea. He was back in New Zealand. Um, and uh, in terms of antipsychotic drugs, I have a fa close family member with a history of mental health problems her whole life. And uh, she took a, you know, had to take a lot of these drugs, and I, I think it harmed her physically, the, some of these earlier experimental drugs. So uh, I, I guess I have some personal interests on, on both aspects. So the drugs might not just be controlling behavior. They might actually be oh, causing Oh, they have side damage. effects, absolutely. Yeah. And there's some research to suggest that life expectancy is reduced uh, by using these drugs long term. Mm. Thanks so much for coming in. And this is open to the public this evening. Anyone uh, with a relative, perhaps with dementia, can come in here? Yeah, absolutely. I, I hope it'll give people a chance to see other options available right. to them. Well, thank you very much for well, giving you, us a preview. Mark Chignell is a professor at the University of Toronto.